Adobe Premiere Pro is an absolute minefield if you're new to using the software. At face value, the interface is full of icons and for half of them, you don't really know what they mean or do. This video is all about some of those mistakes you could make as a beginner user of Adobe Premiere Pro. So then you can be sure to avoid them in the future. There's even a chance you've encountered an issue right now, you've hopped onto Google and searched for a solution. So let's not waste any time and get straight into number one, which is understanding layers. If when you're trying to drag a clip onto your timeline and it doesn't like it or doesn't accept the clip, A, you could have locked your layers by accident. The lock icon is a great tool to have for when you don't want to move a particular asset within your timeline, such as an audio track or a logo watermark. Any cutting or adding of those assets won't be affected if they're selected on a layer that is locked. However, as well as locking existing footage, it also stops you from adding new content onto that particular layer. You'll know if the layer is locked by seeing diagonal gray lines across the entire layer. Simply click on the lock button to the left of the timeline to unlock it. The second reason is that you have told Adobe to specifically not add anything onto that layer by default, which is created by using the areas on your timeline that shows V1, V2 or A1, A2, etc. This feature acts like a conversion process from your source footage into your timeline. If, for instance, V1 and A1 is selected on the left-hand side of your timeline and you drag a clip onto that timeline, it will prioritize those two layers first. If, however, you only have V1, which stands for video highlighted, and not A1, which stands for audio, no audio would be imported onto that timeline or vice versa. <laughs> Number two, speed. For your eagle-eyed viewers or clients, they can easily work out if you have tried to incorporate slow motion into your edit using footage that wasn't intended for slow motion use. So if you received footage shot in 24p, you effectively can't slow that down. There are plugins available for you to smoothen the footage out somewhat, but I'd avoid using that as much as you can. To do this correctly, you simply have to calculate the percentage that your timeline's frame rate can fit into the frame rate of the content recorded. For example, if you shot at 60 frames per second, 24 frames per second is 40% of that 60. Therefore, you can reduce your speed by no more than 40%. Anything between one and 39% will again start to look jolty. Do this correctly and you'll still have buttery smooth slow motion footage. Next up, is sequence settings and if you're not entirely sure on things such as the resolution some good advice is to go to the clip that you feel will be used the most in your edit and open up the properties relay those properties most importantly the frame rate and the resolution into your sequence settings typically you'll want a sequence that is 1920 by 1080 pixels for hd videos and 3840 by 2160 pixels for 4k video then your frame rate could either be 24 or 30 frames if you're in the US, or typically 25 frames per second if you're in somewhere like Europe. There are other resolutions and frame rates used in filmmaking. However, this video is specifically designed for beginner editors of Adobe Premiere Pro. So we're not gonna cover those in this video. Number four is the snapping tool. If you're someone who simply doesn't want to or doesn't have the time to really finesse your edit, there is one thing that when watching your export back can make you go, oh, for and that is the annoyance of blank frames. And this happens when your clips aren't perfectly aligned side by side in your timeline. At the end of the day, there's essentially between 24 and 30 frames within every second on your timeline. So if you're not fully zoomed in or your software causes issues with your computer's playback, this can be an easy thing to miss. So the quickest way to avoid this is by enabling the snap tool which essentially is a magnet that joins two assets on a timeline together, whether that's footage itself, adjustment layers, audio, and so on. Instead of going exactly where you and your mouse are telling those clips to go, which might not always be bang on. I have this feature enabled all the time when I'm editing, and it's just nice to have a feature that eliminates an area of stress whilst you've got enough to contend with. Finally, number five, in and out point. Let's be honest, have you ever exported a video that has about two hours of blank screen at the end of the video, or it cuts the video before it was meant? 
This might be caused by where you've placed your in and out points on your timeline. In and out points basically act as parameters and determines what takes place within them, whether that's what you render, delete, or most importantly, export. Now above your timeline is where your in and out points are positioned and you can either use your mouse and move them around to where your in and out points want to be or by using the timeline cursor use I on your keyboard for an in point and O on the keyboard as an out point. Once they're in the right spot you can then choose to either render out that particular area or export that particular area knowing that nothing else around it will be affected or exported. Now these are just a few mistakes that new users of Adobe Premiere Pro might make. Let me know in the comments if you encounter any more and if I do receive enough, I might even make a part two. Until next time, take care and I'll see you very soon.